Hey everyone, Dara here with Tested, and today I'm going to be reviewing the newest resin printer from the Piapoli, the Phenom L. Piapoli is well known for their line of resin printers, and with this latest release of the Phenom L, Piapoli provides us with one of the largest resin printers on the market. The Phenom L has an impressive 345 by 194 by 400 millimeter build volume, making it an ideal printer for producing large detailed resin prints along with batch production of smaller items. In addition to the build volume, the Phenom L uses MSLA technology. Upon opening the box, you cannot help but notice the massive presence that the Phenom presents. This printer is very heavy, so you will need help with moving the printer to its resting location. I could not help but notice how well and neatly packed the printer was. Upon removing the packing material from the outside of the printer and removing the protective film over the acrylic window, I was met with a stack of styrofoam which housed all the accessories. Packed in the styrofoam was the power cord and a power supply, a metal and plastic scraper, a few Allen wrenches and screws, flash drive, FEP film, resin filters, gloves, and the massive 2.5 kg vat. Also included was an extra 15.4 LCD panel. One thing to note about the LCD panels as it relates to resin printers is that the LCD panels carry a certain lifespan. After a certain amount of hourly uses, the LCD panel would need to be replaced. The LCD panel that comes with the Phenom L does have a lifespan of 400 hours, which is stated on the Piopoli website. Once everything was out of the packaging, I was ready to set the printer up for its print by following the detailed step-by-step -step instructions which you can find on Piopoli's website and also included on the USB drive. Once the build plate was leveled, I installed the vat, plugged in the USB drive, poured some resin in, and I was ready to start printing. Piopoli does recommend printing their test files before beginning any other prints. The test file was already preloaded on the USB drive, so it was just a matter of navigating to the file on the very user-friendly touchscreen and hitting print. I allowed the print to run and return once it was done, and to my surprise, it was a batch print of these tiny intricate cubes in which the Phenom L captured every single detail of every cube. With the test print out of the way, I was ready to begin printing. I wasted no time putting the printer to the test and pulled out a helmet I modeled into the recommended slicing software Chitu Box. For this print, I used my go-to resin Sierra Tech Fast, which Piopoli also has recommended settings listed on their website for each line in the Sierra Tech family. I loaded the file up and pushed print, and about 37 hours later, I was met with an impressive resin print. After cleaning up this print and allowing it to cure, seeing the results gave me confidence to move forward to printing some more detailed and bigger models. Here is what this impressive printer was capable of producing. Next I printed the Black Panther helmet and this helmet was ideal for printing on this printer just because of the amount of detail that it has. The print came out amazing and it captured every detail. So I modeled some constant art around a royal pilot trooper from Star Wars and this was in another print that was able to capture how big you're able to print on this printer. The print came out amazing. All right, so my overall impression with the Phenom L is this printer is impressive and a game changer. Some features that I really appreciated, especially coming from the Phenom, is the angled build plate. On the Phenom, the top of the build plate is flat, allowing resin to rest on the build plate after a print was done. With the angled build plate, the resin flows off the side and back into the vat with minimal resin buildup. I also really like the fact that Piopoli included handles on the build plate. 
it made handling, in my case, an often heavy build plate really easy. With that being said, one downside of the Phenom L is the VAT system. In the event of a failed print and the vat needs to be emptied out in order to clean out any cured resin, it becomes difficult to slide out the vat while trying to not spill any resin. The vat almost seems to be magnetized, thus locking it into place. While not being a bad thing, it does make it difficult to remove. I would love to see Piopoli incorporate handles onto the vat itself as they did with the build plate and incorporate a pull-up system using the handles to remove the vat from the machine. Outside of this, the printer is amazing. This printer will be a staple in my workflow in addition to being an absolute game changer for me. If you are in the market for a large resin printer, you can go check out Piopoli's website for the line of resin printers, including the Phenom L. I hope you all enjoyed this video and this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Well, hope you all enjoyed that review of the Phenom L uh, 3D printer. And now I have Daryl on the line here so we can go more in depth with that testing process. Daryl, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how about you? I'm doing really well, and looking at what you have around you, you have some <laughs> massive, massive prints. I mean, my takeaway watching your review is that this is one of the first times you can do huge prints in one go. Absolutely. This, the Phenom L is, like I said in the video, was a game changer. I haven't been able to print uh, resin prints this big in any, you know, any of the resin printers that I own. So this by far is one of, I think it's one of the biggest uh, resin printers on the market right now. And I'm able to print helmets in one go. As you can see, I printed the Infinity, Infinity Gauntlet. I had to split it, but I mean, the fact that I was even able to print this in resin is, you know, mind blowing. And resin printers are, they used to be this really scary type of printer, at least for me. You know, I was very comfortable with FDM, but like pouring in the resin and question marks about resolution and the mm. versions between like laser based ones uh, versus the DLP ones and now LCD ones. Uh, you're pretty happy with the quality from all the, the kind of modern SLA printers you've been using? Absolutely. So I, I, I'll say this I have converted mostly to printing in resin. Um, and just because of the quality that you get, um, I would model certain things and wouldn't be comfortable printing it on the FDM printer because I know I would lose detail, especially in post-processing. Um, but with the resin printer, I'm comfortable with adding a lot of details to the models and then being confident enough to print it that I know when it comes off the printer, I won't lose those details. And then when it's time to clean up, it's just much more faster. Um, you spend a lot of time sanding PLA or PETG, filling, sanding, and then rinse and repeat, and then primer filler with this, you may hit it two times with some sandpaper and then some primer filler and you might be good to go depending on you know your orientation of the print and um, now don't get me wrong there are you, you know you do get print lines in some of the resin prints and that is really dependent on the angle that you have it so like for instance the Black Panther helmet has some print lines but it's not really visible unless you're close up on it versus the helmet here, which I printed at a 45 degree angle and it has less print lines. Um, so it's orientation, things to figure out, resolution, and then playing with the um, settings in the slicer program as well. I love that you did both the, the Black Panther one and also the Spider-Man one. Both of those feel like good stress tests because the detail on the Black Panther, all those small little raised textures, if there's yes. misalignment, like that would be really noticeable in the print between layers. Yes, and then, you know, with trying to clean this up from a, a FDM printer, it would, it's just a nightmare, because um, you're gonna probably end up sanding away most of these details. And with this print, a lot of those, you don't have to worry about those um, prominent print lines on some of those raised details on the Black Panther helmet. And the same thing with the Spider-Man helmet, I have some texture throughout the helmet. Um, again, it captured all that texture um, amazingly and you know again minimal cleanup this was a failed print and i know we, we probably want to talk about that a little later um, but this was a failed print um, but the quality of it still turned out great now are, are you thinking about in a way because you have to if you're going to print in one go there's a lot of time mm -hmm. investment right the risk mm -hmm. is a little bit higher the payoff is there because you don't have to piece things together but yep. you know using the same model which you've separated before Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about the differences between having to split a helmet up into pieces, how you think about how you break up that helmet versus now going in in one go? 
So it's a little bit easier, to be honest with you, because with the FDM, you have to worry about supports and how you're gonna angle it on the printer, on the print bed. Um, and then, you know, how much support you're gonna use versus the resin prints. Um, I can print a whole helmet. Like I printed the Black Panther helmet and literally I had it sitting up. I think it was like this on the print bed. Um, so you have the print bed up here and then the supports, the supports hanging, holding it to the print bed. Um, I didn't have to worry about as many supports um, hitting certain areas and then the cleanup. Um, literally, you can pull the supports right off and it's minimal cleanup, especially with the settings that I have in the slicing program. Um, it's just, to me, it's just an easier process. Now, the cleanup is a little bit more um, complex versus um, an FDM printer in terms of, uh, you know, right when it comes off the bed, you have to make sure that, you know, you get all the resin off, you have to soak it in alcohol, um, you know, uh, cure it in a curing chamber. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit more post-processing, but again, it, to me, I just like this process much more better than the FDM. Yeah, print. yeah. And the, with the L specifically, right, Game Changer, mm -hmm. because of that volume, that's both yes. the bed size and the height, or is that correct? Yes. Right, well, so the bed the, size. So, so the height is the same as the Phenom, so that's the, ah, the, okay. the um, model before this one. But the actual like width and um, the, you know, the Z depth, you get a lot of, get more room. And like I said, mm. you're able to print these full helmets um, versus where the Phenom, you didn't have as much room um, in there. But the height is the same, they're both 400 millimeters. Got it. So it's not like if you were cutting the helmet off, you weren't cutting like the top and bottom. You'd be ha you'd have to slice off however you angle it, like the sides, and join together like that way. Um, Correct. So for instance, like this helmet, I had to, because this had a little bit more um, width on it. I had to split it in half in order to get it on the Phenom L. Same thing with the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, this filled up the bed and it filled up height wise, but I had to split it in half. But again, these these resin prints are so accurate when you're putting these pieces together. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I really, I really enjoy this process. So I'm, I'm loving the Phenom now. <laughs> I can tell, I can tell. I mean, also <laughs> having just a bigger bed means that even if you're not printing things that are tall, you could print more small things, right? If people are doing manufacturing, you're yep. making small trinkets, keycaps or whatever, like you save time because you can print, basically it's the same amount of time uh, per layer because yep. the display flashes all at once. Yep. So uh, one of the first prints, the test print is actually a batch print. Um, and they print these small little intricate cubes. And the detail, so I, I, I think one thing people may be worried about is the size of this printer and then losing detail. Um, but once I printed these and seen that it captured all the detail in these little cubes, I was confident enough that it would, you know, it would really do a good job. Um, so you don't lose any detail with the, with the size. You know that's something that may be compromised um, with you know having a larger print bed. Um, you lose quality, but the resolution is there. Right, because literally you're talking about display like a screen resolution. Right, they're stretching yep. a panel. It's almost like thinking about a you know like a phone pixel density. Right, larger phone, same resolution, but you get less detail per square inch, kind of thing. Yep, and yeah, but, um, so. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh no, as I was gonna say, and then this, they're using a very high resolution panel uh, across this bed size. Yes, they're using a uh, 4K LCD screen. I think it's 15.4 inches. Um, and then this is MSLA technology. So it's, uh, it, it, it uses a combination of a LA, LCD screen and LED lights um, that, that helps cure this resin. So, um, I mean, the quality and resolution is there. Now, when you said, you know, you have about 400 hours for a lifespan of the LCD, have you gone to the mm -hmm. point with all your prints yet that you're noticing any degradation in the, the quality or that you're going to have to swap them out anytime soon? Um, so the Phenom, I, I'm, I, I believe I'm well over 400 hours on that. Um, I haven't lost any quality. The last few prints I've seen, I've seen some more print lines, and that's probably on me and the way I had the model angled on the bed, so I have to go back and do some testing, but I haven't had any significant changes from when I first got the printer. Um, but yes, these, these LCD screens do have a lifespan, um, 
and, and, it, and it varies through each manufacturer, but uh, Piopoli recommends that, well, they say 400 hours, but again, mine's I think is well over 400 hours now, and I haven't had, to, I haven't had any problems. And they have good documentation and supply if you need to buy the LCD, you won't be you know, out of commission? For too long? Yep. So you, so they have the LCD replacements on their website, and uh, they do have detailed instructions on how to um, change it out. It's just a matter of going into the machine, removing the vat, um, removing the top lid. It's it's taped down, so you just remove the tape. And again, there's um, detailed instructions where you know you're plugging out wires, removing some screws, and plugging it in. So. Um, they really do provide you with the documentation there in the event that you do need to change out the LCD screen. Well, let's talk about the gauntlet because that is a massive, <laughs> massive print. I mean, even though you had to do it in a few pieces, like the fact yeah. that you could even think and say, okay, let's take, go for it and print out a full infinity gauntlet. Uh, yeah. Tell me about the, the design of that for this printer and then whether it makes you feel like you can print full armor on this. Um, so I actually modeled this, uh, I want to say maybe last year, um, and I attempted to print this on an FDM printer um, and had multiple failures. Um, so I would get to like this point, and I'm talking about we're in like 90 hours and the, the print would just fail. Um, so I just left it alone. I gave up. I said, I'm not going to bother with it. Just left it alone. Um, so. You know, I had the chance to review the Phenom and I revisit this, so I did a lot of remodeling on it. Um, some of the thickness, the wall thickness, I went back and changed. And just thinking about printing in resin, um, if the walls were too thick, it would eat up too much resin. Like, I would, ha I would be going through bottles of resin. So I, so I bought down the wall thickness on these to, I think, maybe about four millimeters. Um, and just made sure that this was something that I can print without having to hollow it out because most of the time people uh, hollow out their prints so this way they're not using as much resin. I tend to model the helmets that I'm um, gonna print on resin, print, print in resin at like four millimeters so this way I don't have to hollow it out and at the same time I'm not using as much resin. Um, I mean the gauntlet, I, I, so I was hesitant about printing it at first because I didn't know First of all, it was gonna fit on the bed, the whole thing. And then when I put it into the slicing program, I saw that it wasn't gonna fit at all. Um, but luckily enough, the design on the gauntlet, the front piece here, um, there's a space in between there. So I said that would be a good place to split it in half. This way, when I do go to clean up, um, I'm not doing as much intricate sanding in between detailed pieces to try and get, you know, get it all cleaned up. Um, I printed it. It maybe took about, I don't know, maybe a week a week and a half to, to print um, each side, and then the palm and the, um, the fingers, which is probably out of view of camera, but I was able to get all of it printed. Um, I did not, one thing I didn't, I did not keep track of how much resin I used, um, but it was quite a bit. Um, but it came out, it came out great, man. It, and I'm more comfortable with cleaning this up versus on the FDM. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. And it's another one of those things when you think about like the scope of prints, you know, not only is it a bigger print and you can think about different types of things like big gauntlets, mm -hmm. full helmets, but the time spent kind of monitoring and managing the print, if it's a week mm -hmm. to print, you're gonna, mm -hmm. like it sounds like you're going checking in and pouring resin in and refilling the reservoir on a regular basis. It's almost like growing yep. a plant. Exactly. Um, so I would wake up in the morning, come down here, check the vat, pour in enough to make sure that I was good for the day, head off to work, come back. Um, and the one thing about this, the vat stays pretty full um, for the most part. I, I think I was pouring in more resin than I needed, um, making me think that I may have used more than I intended to. But this vat is huge um, and it holds a lot of resin. Um, and I, you know, and, and, and in the review, I stated that trying to change out that that vat when it's full is, is very difficult because there's so much resin in there. Um, the first time I changed it out, I got resin, and you know, you got to be careful with this resin. Um, I got it all over the place trying to pour it out that vat. Um, but again, you know, monitoring it, like you said, it's like growing a plant. But you know, it pays off at the end. 
totally. And that's why it feels like this also is appropriate for shops that have a lot of people there all the time and people yep. can be managing multiple printers, doing big, yep. you know, medium scale manufacturing and and they can like it fits into that type of workflow. What type of tips do you have for people who wanna take on a printer of this size and print things of this scope? Uh, just um, probably safety first. Uh, make sure that you have the machine in a well-vented area. Um, just do a little bit of research on resin printing and what it takes, because again, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a messy process um, in terms of cleanup once you get it off the, the bed. But once you have like a curing station and you have a dedicated place, I have like one area in my garage that's just for resin printing. And that's where it's isolated too. And I keep all my cleaning supplies there. Everything stays in that. So I'm not cross contaminating that with anything else because of the um, you know, toxi toxicity of the, of the resin. So I tend to keep it all in one area, um, well ventilated. Um, and yeah, I mean, the only thing that I wish Piopoli would have done with this printer is to add handles to the to the vat. It's like I said, it was pretty difficult to empty that vat out. Um, like a pull-up system would be awesome. And one thing they did that I really do appreciate is that they added handles to the to the bed. Um, and pulling off something like the Infinity Gauntlet or or this, it's heavy, you know. With all the <laughs> with all the um, with all the supports, because there's a lot of supports that I had running through this, um, and it tends to get heavy. So having those handles on the bed and being able to um, handle it in that manner was was a real real uh, plus and a bonus. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, I would highly recommend this printer. Um, I would probably start off with something smaller first and then kind of graduate to one of these bigger printers so that you can get the hang of it of, you know, of resin printing and, and get your, kind of get your feet wet and then you know, move on to something big like this. Totally, and there are so many SLA printers out there that essentially use the same principles, uh, but a smaller form factor, smaller screen, you know, less yep. build volume, and everything scales up. You're using more alcohol for washing it, you have a bigger yes. curing area, right? Yep. And so it's not a lot of people are gonna have that even in the home garage that space to start. Exactly. So I had to, for this particular printer, I had to build a curing box for it to, to accommodate the size of these prints. Um, and then I found myself going from when alcohol was available, um, the little eight ounce or, you know, 16 ounce bottles of alcohol, 90%, uh, 99% isopropyl alcohol to buying the gallons, which I was able to find at a local store here. Um, I would have to buy it by the gallon and, um, you know, I had to change up my whole washing station. I went from a little tub where I could just shake the prints in and clean up to actual buckets of um, trying to clean this stuff up. So um, there, there, there's some thought to put into it before you actually purchase one to make sure that you're prepared for the cleanup process because that's something that you, you, know, you wanna take serious and um, you know, make sure that you're, you know, keep up on it. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for all those insights. Great review. Super informative for me thinking about, you know, uh, prints and how, how to think about 3D printing at this size. And can't wait to see more helmets. Uh, I know you've modeled nonstop, so congratulations <laughs> on getting this printer in. Uh, it's good to see you, Daryl. Good to see you, too. Thank you, Norm. Thank you all for watching. We'll be back next time with another project from Daryl. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time. Bye.